let's be honest, Excel's default pivot tables don't look great. Their number formatting, color choice, and header text is rather questionable. But if you follow these eight pivot table design tips, you'll go from ugly pivot tables like this to something much more impressive like this. So let's get into it. Starting with number one, which is field names. And let's first go over the data set that we'll be working with, which is this one right here that you can download for free in the video description. So let's first insert a pivot table by going to the insert tab and just clicking on pivot tables. We'll hit on okay there. And here's my pivot tables fields on the side, which you can actually move around. From here, let's suppose that I want to have the products. So I'm just gonna go and select the products under my rows. And then let's say that I wanna have my revenue, my expenses, and my profit under the values. And you notice that for all of these, we start to get this sum of sign at the very beginning on all three of them, which is rather annoying. Now, if we wanna remove this, you might think of just writing revenue over it. But as soon as we do, you'll notice that it says that pivot table field name already exists. That's because we already have it in here as revenue. So we're not going to be able to do that. Now a workaround to get rid of that sum of across all of them in the table is simply to hit on control H. That's actually the find and replace pop up. So what do we want to find? Just sum of and we want to replace it with nothing and we'll hit replace all as we want to get rid of it for all of these. So we'll hit replace all, hit OK and hit close. And now the reason we've been able to do that is because if we double click inside of it, you'll notice that it's added an extra space. So that makes it all work. All right, that's the first tip done. And now let's work on the second one, which is the text and column format. Suppose we want to format these numbers in the table, we might select them all with Control shift down Control shift right and just hit on Control one That's going to show the formatting cells pop up. So we'll go to number here and let's say we want a separator for the commas and we don't want any decimal places. So we'll hit on OK. Let's also say that we want to make these somewhat wider so we can see them a bit better. And we also want to align this top part. So all of these headers, we want to align them to the right. So let's say that we're happy with this. And now we import a few more rows of data. So we would just go over to the pivot table analyze and hit on refresh in case we added more rows. So just hit refresh there. But you'll notice that it all goes back to the default format, which is quite annoying as you had done all the formatting tips there. Now to prevent this from happening, you just want to go inside of the pivot table, right click and go to pivot table options towards the bottom. From here at the very bottom, you'll find that there's the auto fit column widths, which let's say that we don't want. And there's also the preserve cell formatting, which we do want. That's going to keep the same number format and so forth. So we'll hit on OK there. Let me fast forward how I do those changes again. All right, we're at the same spot as before. And now this time when we hit on pivot table analyze and click on refresh, you'll notice that it doesn't actually change the formatting, which is how we want it. Moving to number three, and here we have some layout tips. So over here, you'll notice that I've rearranged the pivot table to add a few more values. So you can see here what that layout looks like. If you wanna copy it, feel free to pause this video. So you'll notice that the table does look quite overwhelming as there's so much data. So one quick tip here would be to just select anywhere inside the table. Under design, we're gonna go ahead and add some blank rows between these totals. So insert blank line after each item, click on that. Now you can see we have a bit more breathing room. Then you might consider if you wanna have these grand totals on the side and on the bottom or not. If you want to remove them, you can just click inside grand totals and just turn them off. And again, you can turn them back on fairly easily. Lastly, here we have the subtotals, which you can find at the top of each of these sections. You can actually change this to the bottom by going inside subtotals and say show subtotals at bottom of group. Sometimes this makes more sense and is easier to read. In number four, we've got removing the filters. As of now, you might have noticed we have some of these drop downs, which are a bit distracting. If we want to get rid of them, we can just go to pivot table analyze and all the way to the side, we can click on the plus and minus buttons as well as the field headers. 
The plus and minus is going to be for these buttons right here, like next to the Amazon or the Foot Locker. So just deselect that and we'll exit out of that option. And then the field headers is going to be that top part. So we get rid of those two right there. I can take them back on so you see where they are. Finally, if you're showing the whole Excel file, you might want to get rid of the fields list, which is all of this data to manipulate. So right now it just looks like a normal table and not a pivot table with the fields list there. According to Forbes, almost 90% of Excel files have errors in them. Now, if you don't want to fall into that category and get in trouble with your manager, you can consider taking our Excel for business and finance course to learn all of the industry best practices, impress your manager, and avoid any errors. With our comprehensive curriculum, we cover everything you need to know, ranging from formatting best practices and shortcuts, to building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. This is basically the course I wish I had before working in corporate jobs in business and finance. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description below. And if you want more than just Excel, we also offer several other courses, including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and more. All right, back to the video. In number five, we've got adjusting blank cells. So if we take a look at the pivot table that we're working on, you'll notice that we have a lot of blanks. Now, it's not very clear if this is a blank because there's an error or because it's simply a zero. To find out, we can just double click inside of them and notice here that we don't have any transactions, which basically implies that there's no um, values in there. While in this one, you'll see that we have a ton of data, which basically means that it all looks correct, but maybe it makes more sense to add a zero in there as opposed to leaving it blank. So we can just go to right click and then under pivot table options, Towards the bottom here, you'll find that we can either add something when there is an error, but in this case, we don't have any errors. Or for empty cells, we can just show a zero there and hit on OK. Hopefully, this makes things a bit more clear for our team. In number six, let's work on making a template for the pivot table design. This makes a lot of sense for a company if you want to follow their color palette. So over here, the first thing that we want to do is under the design tab, go to this drop down and just select a color that's similar to the one that uh, your company has. Let's say in my case, it's this one right here. I'm just going to click on that. From there at the top, once you have it selected, go to right click and click on duplicate. Now this is the template that we'll use. So let's say we call this one career principles which is the name of my company. And we want to make certain changes. For example, let's suppose that the Amazon total, footlocker total, and so forth, we want in a yellow color. We will go ahead and find the subtotal row, which is this one right here, and go to format. Under fill there is where we want to change things, pattern color. And I'm just going to go for a recent yellow color that I already had there. And now under the font, we also want to make sure that this color is black instead of white there. Hit on OK and OK again. Now, if we go inside, you'll notice there's no changes. But once we go to that drop down, we now have the custom up top, which is our template. If we click on it, you'll see here that we start to see how it's changed with that yellow header. So there's really a lot of customization that can be done here. In number seven, we have adding dates and there's a few ways to go about this. But in a scenario like this one where we already have a lot of data, if we go ahead and add the dates like on inside of the rows, you notice that it just gets too messy as there's too much information. Let's get rid of that for now. I'm just going to drag, drag that out. So all of the date fields I'm dragging out there. And instead, a better way is to actually go to the pivot table analyze tab and just click on insert a timeline. Click on the date there and hit on OK. Now you'll see that we have this timeline to the side, which is fully dynamic. We can change the months like so. We can even change this into a quarter on a quarterly basis like so, and even by year. Another way that we could have done it instead of adding it in the rows there is just selecting the dates and putting it as a filter up top. The problem is this one's not as easy to spot. 
So for someone that doesn't really know how to use things, the timeline probably makes more sense. Finally, in number eight, we have adding visual support. And this makes the most sense for comparison purposes. For example, in a table like this one over here, where we have the column under region, the values as a profit and the rows as a retailer, it's difficult to see exactly which number is high and which one is low. So one way to go about this is just select the inside area. So this part right there and go to conditional formatting under data bars because this is profit let's say we go for green as that's positive generally and we can see there that the inside of the west the west gear is really the one that's standing out as the best retailer in that western region and the best overall for us awesome now before you leave there is one final bonus feature that you probably didn't know let's suppose that we want to send this to our manager so instead of just copying and pasting it which does come with some difficulties there's actually a better way, which you'll see why now. So we can go over to this camera icon. If you don't find it, just go inside of this dropdown under more commands, under popular commands up over here. You wanna click on all commands and just search for the camera. So it's gonna be camera, just type it in there. Once you find it, just click on add and click on okay. In my case, I don't need to as I already have it. But now all you want to do is select the area you're interested in, which is going to be this entire table. Just click on the camera icon. Now, if we click anywhere else, we have basically pasted that. But what's nice here is that we can easily resize it because it works just like an image. Now you might wonder, what if the data changes? Well, if we change the label here to Southwest, for example, just for us to see what happens, you'll notice that that visual also updates automatically. So it's a fully dynamic image that can be resized to fit your presentation. Now that you understand how to make pivot tables look nicer, check out this video to make beautiful Excel charts or take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.